Hi friends, it's Chuck's girl. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm a little busy. There's a little bit of a mess now. Not really. Yeah, there's a mess over there, but you didn't come to see that. You came to see me. <laughs> okay, I've been out in the field selling hay. So I'm a little disheveled, but I know if I don't get this video done, it's never going to get done. And I wanted to show you guys what I made from yarn. So let me show you. Okay. This gift, I made this, um, I started it, I think in, at the end of June and finished it in July and I need to get it out because the baby's due next month. So it's either now or never. So you get, <laughs> get the hay farmer. <laughs> she is. It was warm out there today. It is, um, I think the sixth, the sixth of October, October already. Let me look and see. How you guys been? Oh, it's the 7th of October. I can't believe it already. 7th of October. Um, and yeah, summer's over and it's warm outside today. We did have some frosty days and, and now we have some warm weather again. So it was a perfect day for selling hay. <laughs> All right, let's get to what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you um, the little gifts that I made for this baby. I looked for the labels. I know I have the labels. Where did I put them? Where did I stash them? I don't remember, but I'm hoping that I don't bump my phone because I've got it perched just perfect. Okay, so if I had the labels, I could tell you. I think the color of the yarn is rosewood, and I thought I had written it down maybe I did let's see um mm -hmm. no I didn't I didn't write it down unfortunately I thought I did and I might have somewhere but it's not there so this is the yarn I picked up the yarn at Joann's I can't remember which yarn it was I don't think it was big twist um I'm pretty sure it was a Karen one but I'm I'm sorry I can't remember but the pattern for this baby blanket was from uh, Crystal at Bago Day Crochet it's a nice I think it was just a one row repeat it's like a shell pattern and then I did this the um, edges with that little scallop on there it goes all the way around so this one here let's see if i have the, what details i wrote down i do know that i used let me get some glasses out here um it's a four weight yarn because this baby's going to be due in november and so it's cooler than our you know so we need a heavier weight blanket um i used 600 grams for the baby blanket yeah 600 grams and i think it's the perfect size for putting over baby while baby's in the car seat or if she's in her stroller or just you know laying around she could even lay the baby on it there's enough space here I love the color of it <clears throat> it's this nice like rose and cream and a, like a tannish beige color so there's a light rose and a dark rose I like it and then to go with it, I made, I'm trying to figure out what I want to show you first. <laughs> I made a baby bonnet. Isn't that sweet? It has a cute little ruffle and it ties here. Perfect. This, oh my goodness, I just loved making this with the back of it. This um, pattern for this bonnet, sorry, I'm hearing my daughter bounce around and I'm trying to think, came from Maisie and Ruth. She's also on YouTube. So Crystal at Bago Day Crochet is on uh, YouTube. She shows you how to make that blanket. And then uh, Maisie and Ruth um, is another person that creates, and those are the names of her grandmother. And I don't know if I even know what her name was, but 
actual person that does the tutorial. So cute. And this was so fast and easy to make. Like I could do so many more of these. So sweet. I love baby bonnets. Something nostalgic about them. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. And for that one, for the baby bonnet, it was 45 grams of a four weight. And then, ooh, I made a cardigan. At least I think it's a cardigan, but I, I guess it really isn't called a cardigan for a baby. Um, some people refer to these in America as sweaters. Um, but when I was looking in one of my pattern books that are vintage from like the 1940s, they're called SAC, S-A-Q-U-E. I have never heard the term SAC used before, but it's in all of my vintage, like all of my vintage uh, pattern books for baby. There's that. Yeah, little sack is what it's called. And I even had to put it in my phone and see if um, my Google Translate could tell me how to pronounce it. And it's pronounced sack. So sack it is. Isn't that cute? It has a little scalloped edge to it. And it's scallop. I put on two buttons there, little beige buttons to go with the beige here. Sorry, my nail has... Um, snagging everything. I like to keep my nails super short, so I'm surprised that I was able to get it chipped there, but these are farming hands. Farming hands. So they often have cuts and things, but right now I've got a little tear in the nail. Usually these fingers, for some reason, these poor two fingers Luckily, they're not my working fingers. I mean, I work with all of them, but these ones go to work with me. These ones go to work with me. <laughs> and then these ones work for me all the time, but <laughs> these ones are my most important when I'm at work. <laughs> so anyways, back to this. There you go. So there's that. So cute. And this one here, um, the pattern, I didn't have to like sew on like the sleeves and stuff because I guess there's some patterns that you have to do that. This was just working it all out and just it's all one piece. That was fun to make too. Then I made these, these little booties. And these also came from the uh, pattern is also from Maisie and Ruth on YouTube. So this, I made it to go with these. So the buttons match. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. It might, never mind. I thought I did, but that's right. I did. I, um, I thought I was going to put them on to match, but then I decided to put on a little different button for those because they were a little smaller. And I think I made these ones first. I already had the buttons out for these and that, but anyways either here nor there but I made it to go with this and I'm not quite sure if I even wrote down yes I did um these little shoes these little shoes take 18 grams the cardigan was 140 grams of yarn of the four weight um, so this little baby that's coming, she has an older sister who's about seven or eight years old. And I decided that I needed to make her something as well from the same yarn because I had three skeins of yarn and I wanted to use it all up. So I was able to make a scarf. So this one here is for the big sister. And then that way she will have something to wear. Um, that's cute. That goes with the baby. Because... I don't like to forget the bigger kids when babies come in, you know, gifts are being given a lot to the baby and there's no reason to not spoil the older siblings as well. Then I had just a little bit of yarn left over, just a little. So that scarf, that took 210 grams. 
So with a little bit of yarn I had left over, I made the baby booties. And this baby booty pattern came from Maisie and Ruth. And I didn't want to necessarily make booties to go with the whole thing at first because I didn't know if like if I made shoes, that's what I meant to say. The plan was to make shoes. Um, I didn't know how I would like the shoes in the multicolor. I'm sure they would be okay, but I didn't know if I'd like it or not. And because I had a little leftover, I decided that go ahead and make these little booties. So this and this, these are cute. And the little bonnet, <laughs> right? Cute, cute, cute. And, you know, little shoes, the little shoes, they can be worn with a different outfit, like little pants set or this one or a little dress, something. So she has options in her blanket. And so these little booties, they were 27 grams of the four weight yarn. It just only three skeins of yarn created all of this. <laughs> and this <laughs> and this so look at that what do you guys think what do you think little booties what do you think <sighs> would you put these things on your baby I I'm a fan of like that this kind of thing um when my baby was little, I didn't know how to crochet, unfortunately. Um, so I always had to look for these things to buy them. Um, if I knew how to crochet them, I would have. But when I found them, oh my gosh, I had sweaters and blankets in every color and booties if I can find them, bonnets, like the bonnets, not so much the hats as much as the bonnets. These were hard to find. Um, I had them in every color, and every time she had a different outfit on, I had a blanket to match her outfits. And I changed her outfits at least twice a day because she had so many clothes. This is true. <laughs> she had so many clothes. I changed her twice a day at least so I could let her wear all the things. I have proof because I have pictures. <laughs> I took pictures, lots of her scrapbooks. I only have six months worth of done, I think, or maybe a little bit further now. Her scrapbook pile is like this big, like huge. I can only put in, I think in each scrapbook with added papers, I think is only two months each, two, 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 two. It's crazy. I only did it for like a year and a half though. And then, um, I didn't change her as much cause she went to preschool, but yeah. I even liked the crochet bibs and things like everything handmade, loved handmade. So let me know. Do you guys do the handmade thing for your babies, grandbabies, nieces, nephews, friends, kids, you know, pets? <laughs> I like this, the cute handmade stuff for pets too. So there's that. Um, I have more stuff that I haven't showed you guys. I really, I really should. I hate to get up though. Ugh. I hate to bump this as I take a reach. Oh, it's over here. So I also made these. Let me show you some little round washcloths. Um, I was enjoy enjoying making these and now not so much, but I figured they fit in the hand and you could wash. You could wash your body or wash dishes. This one's made out of um, that soft, soft cotton from Hobby Lobby. Uh, I love this cotton. And I think the yarn color was brights. No, that is not even right. I'm not sure what the number, what the color of that one was. This one's cotton yarn that I had on hand. I think this one, these were like just what I had left over. And so I was able to use the three different ones and put them on there. Here's another one like that, the Hobby Lobby one, and this one, Hobby Lobby. This one's from my mother. This pattern came from Bag of Day Crochet Crystal. This is her hanging 
towel. I did modify it a little bit as I made it shorter um, so it doesn't stretch and hang um, so far down. Look at these buttons. Little craft buttons that I picked up. And I'm pretty sure I got them from the thrift store. Brand new. And they have butterflies on them. They're cute. They were made in China, though. I'm usually not a person that buys stuff that made in China, but they were cute. And um, let me see. I think that's I think that's it that I have to show you guys for that. I'm currently oh oh I know I just need something. Mm, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find the other things. Ooh, let me show you guys. I'm coming right back. I promise you. Okay, I've got a couple of things. I showed you guys like a little preview. I did make this one. This is one that I'm keeping. Um, so this one here is also from a four weight yarn. And this is my very first, very first baby sack. And I have it in blue and I'm going to keep it and tuck it away for future grandbabies. Now my daughter is only 14. I do not expect or want any grandbabies soon, but I figured I can make these things while I still have semi good eyes and young enough and no arthritis in the hands. Um, and put these things away for her babies, tuck them away. And then if she doesn't use them, passes them along to somebody else or let her children, you know, put them on dolls, that's fine. But blue can be for girls as well. This one here is more simple, a little more plain, um, because I did do it in the blue and that way if she does use it for a boy, it doesn't look very girly. I have some vintage buttons that I bought either from an antique store or a thrift store or something, but oh, so I had those. There was only three that that were all tied together, so I put two on there. A little vintage pattern. So there's that, and that was the same one that I used for that rose one. I used the same pattern, and then this bonnet is a Maisie. Ruth and Maisie, Maisie and Ruth. I think it's Maisie and Ruth. It's one of her patterns. And I also liked it. So it didn't quite go with this one, but it does because it uses a shell pattern. This one uses a shell pattern and this one is also a shell pattern. Um, I like that it had this scalloped edge. So it could be for a boy or a girl. And then she shows you how to make these cute ties with the fancy end. So I think she calls those little flowers. I'm not quite sure. There's this bonnet. And then for this one, because I did want to make it more of um, for boy or girl, I wanted to do the little booties as opposed to shoes. So there's the booties. So this these ones I started out with the spring and then I finally went ahead and made the, the booties so that way I can um, put these away. But for now, they're just in my craft closet because I'm still admiring the fact that I had done these. So those are that. And then for my father-in-law, I made him, this is his Christmas present. I made him a blanket. It took me about three weeks to do because I don't always get to to um, crochet every day, but when I do, so it's pretty long. It's a it's just um, a lap one, but he's a retired Los Angeles police, and so I made him the thin blue line like I made for my husband because my husband is also a retired police detective SWAT guy. So anyways, that is that for that. <laughs> um, 
last year I made a Christmas stocking and I'm gonna make another one. So we should go on that adventure because that's fun. I got it started, but I'm not quite sure that I'm doing it correctly. So I am gonna need to double check that and keep carrying on. But this is, um, this is the pattern that I'm going to be replicating. Uh, my friend in Denmark, Jane, she helped me figure out this pattern because this pattern here is not common. I have looked. I have looked in vintage books. I have looked online. I have looked everywhere that I can possibly look within uncrazy um, means to find this exact granny square pattern and I cannot. So I'm thinking that the woman who made these Christmas stockings for this particular family that maybe she came up with this as her own pattern. I don't know. But my friend Jane was able to figure it out and therefore I'm gonna duplicate that one. So it's slightly different color wise than the one I did last year. Um, you can find that video I think here or on, on YouTube, or if, I think if you go on my Instagram, you'll be able to find it there if you're just curious. So gonna do that and then hopefully get to some other um, crochet projects. I'm hoping to make some slippers. I got some cute yarn for that. Make some slippers for my daughter for Christmas. And I think that's all I'm gonna have time for really because we're already in October. <sighs> Still got a lot to do and get done. I have been cross-stitching very little. I did some this year, just haven't really done much of it this year. Um, but I have some plans for that as well. <laughs> so maybe in another video. I, I just inherited two big like office file boxes worth of books. And most of them are Christmas it's so exciting some I have some I've been eyeballing and wanting and just haven't purchased them yet they're all vintage um, because I love the vintage stuff I mean I truly do let me show you the stack of vintage crochet books that I just picked, picked up and I have more I've been collecting them <laughs> I've been searching and searching and so every time I go to an antique store, a thrift store, garage sales, I'm looking for them. And I really haven't had any much luck finding them all. Some aren't vintage, like these two are not. This one's not. But these ones, nope, not that one either, but these ones are. So if you're interested in maybe a flip through, I can't promise anytime soon. Um, maybe as the winter drags on and I don't have to be outside trying to do farmy things or working things, but I'm just kind of like showing you guys um, some of the look. It's so cute. I think this one, these ones are knit maybe. I don't know. Some of these are knit. I don't know how to knit yet, but I'm going to learn. So here's some more of the, the baby jackets. This one is, where's that one that I was just showing you guys? This is the one I did. No, that's not the one I did. Uh, duh. I just picked up this one, but it's very similar to that one because I do have another, I have another stack, not a whole lot. Um, you know, like doilies, this one's like doilies, hot plates, tablecloths, rugs. Baby gems. Some of these are really tattered because they're old. They're nearly a hundred years old. The Learn How To book. I might already have this one. And um, they show you how to do things. Maybe I don't have this one. I can't remember. I'll have to look. <laughs> it's pretty bad when you have things and you don't know if you have it or not. But I'm not the only person because when I was purchasing these, I saw where somebody had duplicates of the same, you know. There's, baby. There's like, that's what I think of as a baby sack. But let me show you guys in here. They show you how to make diaper covers. Those are the things that I liked too for my baby. I didn't like her diaper showing. 
Um, and so when she wore like disposable diapers, she definitely had a diaper cover over them. Otherwise she was in cloth diapers and you know, anyone who knows who cloth diapers, those are super cute. But I'm trying to see if I can find why they call them a baby sack. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, and crochet set. Anyway. Uh, let's see, I have stoles and accessories. Look at that. Here's some stoles. And I'm that girl. I haven't, this one's for like home stuff, different things. These are baby, these ones are the new ones. These are new, new, new. And look what I got, more baby booties so if you guys want I mean I could do those and you guys don't even have to say anything but if you do if you're like yeah show me the stole one or can you do that one because I don't know when I'll get to these so you know if there's a certain one you want to see like almost like right away then let me know because sweetheart. Of course, I think we're all good babies until we get older. Then we become rotten people sometimes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> see, here it is. Let's see. 504. Okay. Let's see, here's the word sack. S-A-Q-U-E. And this shows you for number 504. That's the image. And, oof, I don't want to, here's 504, and it says, sack and bonnet. So I'm not lying. <laughs> hey guys, now you learned a new word, you can impress your friends while you're sitting around the dinner table and be like, do you know what a sack is, a baby sack? <laughs> All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little, like, um, show and tell basically, and I will make you another video soon. Talk to you later. Bye.